Thank you all. I'm so sorry for the kind of tiny couple of minutes delayed. I was, there was another Zoom call and I got off it and then it was like my computer was reloading. So, but we're here now and we've got an awesome um, conversation ahead of us. Um, just for everybody, all, for all the Albright people, we have Katie Phillips, who is the founder of Daring Mighty and the School of Self Love. She is an Albright member and she is just um, one hell of a powerhouse, essentially. And we have Ben Bidwell, who is her special guest, and he is also known as the Naked Professor. Um, and they are going to be talking about all about the, the stripping back our masks of masculinity. That was a tongue twister there of a line and um, just I'm going to hand over to Katie quite quickly because I know we've got to start but just um, if you could all please um, keep your microphones on mute um, if you've got any questions do pop them in the chat box and we will get to them and answer them and um, it just saves it just makes lets everyone else be able to hear Ben and Katie um, talk but yeah I'll hand over to Katie amazing hello everyone I'm recognizing so many faces oh my god Juliet's here from a, you're, we're in the States, oh, you can't talk, we won't do that now, we won't waste time with talking to everybody, but it's so lovely to see so many familiar faces. And I'm thinking as well that tonight we were meant to be, Ben, we were meant to be doing this live at the Albright in London, weren't we? Of course we I know, I know, and we're both saying it's, 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 well, it's a new challenge doing it over Zoom because you can't feel, you, you can't interact with the audience, so it's a bit of a new experience, I guess, but we're, um, I'm still like really looking forward to having this conversation and I can see faces. I've got it on grid screen. So um, I am, I'm, I'm taking it in for sure. Awesome. Yeah, me too. Me too. And I kind of just want to take a moment to, to take it in because this is a completely, this is, Ben and I often have chats and I get off the calls and think, damn, I wish we'd recorded that. There was great content there. Like we don't really know how to have a conversation. It doesn't kind of go deep, do we? We just... No, no, block out a couple of hours because, um, yeah. yeah, it's, um, <laughs> we've got to fit it into an hour today. This is going to be the challenge. Totally, totally. So we kind of briefly know what we want to talk about. Um, and it's something that we are both incredibly passionate about, this piece of, really what we're going to talk about this evening is the masculine, feminine energy dynamic. So we're not talking about gender. We're talking about an energy that we believe we subscribe to this belief that it's an energy within all humans uh this masculine energy the feminine energy and ben and i have both had our own journeys around healing our masculine and feminine energies from di for different reasons from different perspectives me as a woman him as a man and we kind of just want to see where that conversation flows tonight is that right ben is that what we're doing I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think we we both know we're we're at our best um, when we're at our or being in our in our authentic selves. And um, uh, we've got a rough plan, but I think this is just going to flow, not to script, but it's going to flow where it's meant to go. And uh, we're going to invite questions as we go, right? So if, if people want to ask anything, we'll pick up anything as as we go, or we'll we'll leave space with questions at the end, whatever yeah. whatever seems to work. Let's see what happens. Yeah, let's see. What yeah. Happens. So should we dive in with while I know. A bunch of faces here I don't know everybody's so we're gonna just start from the basics and presume that no one knows anything about what masculine and feminine energy is so should we just kind of talk about Ben what's tell us what do you think and I'll chime in what do you think masculine energy is and what's feminine yeah well should I, should I hit the, the masculine and, and let you do a feminine because I guess um yeah. You know, I, I would rather you were more accurate with the feminine than me. And um, I guess I've got, gone all in on, on masculinity because that's all I've known and that's what I've, I've learned and experienced. But um, if someone said to me a long time ago, put it this way, someone said, oh, uh, I've got feminine energy in me in my 20s, I'm now 38. Someone said, you need to embrace your feminine more. As a man, it's like, mm, I, that, that doesn't interest me. I, you know, I'm a man. I want masculine energy. Now, at the age of 30, I went through a transition and started to realize that actually, I probably wasn't being all of myself. I was being the man that I felt I should be. And from a young age, that was a man who was told to be strong, tough, brave, uh, unemotional, um, take all those kind of masculine, stereotypically masculine traits, if I wanted to thrive in the world as a man. And it was only really at the age of 30, when I, I, I had challenges around sex, that, that meant I, I worked with a coach. And I, she started to help me uncover more of who I actually was. She started to uncover my, my actual truth. And my actual truth was that I've got both masculine and feminine 
energy within me. And she started to rewire me and allow me to start to learn about this, um, the, the emotions that were within me that I was just simply suppressing because I thought that was my duty as a man. Um, she, she showed me that I love to be kind. She showed me that I wanted to love. She showed me, she, she got me sending flowers to my mum and telling my mum that I love her. And it got me feeling proud. Although in my head, I was like, ooh, like, is this, I don't feel like this, I shouldn't be doing that. What if my mates know I'm sending flowers to my mum and telling her I love her? And this perspective I had of myself as a man was sort of slowly crumbling. But deep down, that felt better. The reality for me was that I was learning to embrace both my masculine and my feminine and becoming more of who I was capable of rather than just sticking into this principle of just being that strong, tough warrior that I was trying to be through the generalizations that I was shown. Does that answer the question? Yeah. What was, what, I'm interested, what was, what felt so uncomfortable at first about sending flowers to your mum? What was so unmasculine about that? All the women on the call right now, we're like, but we love flowers from guys. <laughs> and I know that. My son's older, he'll go buy me flowers. Yeah. And I knew that. And deep down, I knew that. But there was a part of me, and I, I called it my ego. There was a part of my ego was like, oh, that L word. But my mum's going to say it back to me. And I'm going to have to have this sort of soppy conversation. And that's just not who I, that's not the man that I'm programmed to be. I, I, that's not who I was shown. It's not what I've been trying. That's not how I've been aligning myself for 30 years. This is hard. And I was having to overcome that voice. But deep down, I knew it was right. But it was just that voice of trying to keep me like safe in the, in the, in the body and the, the, the personality that, that I already knew. So it was just, it was, a, it was trying to overcome that ego for me and letting go of the perception of who I thought I was meant to be. Yeah. So, okay. So for clarity, you grew up believing that a man had to be, tell me, fill in the blank had to be strong, tough, brave, courageous, unemotional. Um, and yeah, they were the kind of the key characteristics. And that's what I saw from society. You know, when I, when I watched TV, I saw Arnie, I saw Sylvester Stallone, I saw Terminator, Rambo. I saw these strong men who maybe there was a bit of emotion in them, but fundamentally they didn't feel pain. They didn't suffer, they weren't crying. They weren't sharing love. They were being the warriors. And if I wanted to thrive, that was my, that was what I saw subconsciously. No one was, I wasn't having lessons on this, but this is what I just saw from society. Yeah. I mean, none of us got lessons. No. Not directly. Indirectly, of course, we've absorbed all of it. <laughs> so much. Yeah, exactly. And how, so how, is, is there a similar story for you around so, feminine energy? Well, so for the feminine, okay. Oh goodness. Which, where do I even begin with that? Because I've had to, I've had to, do healing work around my masculine energy as well as my feminine. Um, I had been told, I was told once, and I know you were told this too, and I can't wait to share this comparison story. Katie, you need to be more in your feminine. So this goes back kind of four years when I was working with a coach and I was wanting to call in my guy, now my husband. And the piece was, your masculine's running the show, where's the feminine in the picture? And I was like, well, what are you talking about? I, look at me. I couldn't be more feminine. Like I'm not a girly girl, but I'm pretty darn feminine. And, but what I didn't know that what was running my show was my masculine energy, which was all around kind of pushing my way through life, striving through life, competing in life, needing to be the best, needing to be perfect, needing to achieve, ticking the to-do list, like I was always a high achiever and I go right back to when I was a little girl, I got my sense of significance, my sense of worth. Uh, I got my love and connection in the world through proving that I was good through achieving stuff where you could actually look at it. Like it was all external stuff, but you could look at it and you could say, I did that. Like it was, you know, it was a tangible kind of look. I, I ticked everything on that list. I, I got the, the pay rise. I went there and I achieved that visibly. Like, look at me, I'm an achiever. And I was always a super high achiever going through school and I got my A grades and then my career, super high achiever, did well, yada, yada, until you reach burnout. 
and you realize that actually that model doesn't really work but what does work like how, how do i find the balance what, what even is that and actually what i came to realize that's that was where the feminine needed to come in but the the story that you and i are kind of depicting right now feels a bit like well the, the masculine's bad the masculine energy is bad but what we i know we've both discovered is of course it's not of course the masculine and part of my my most deepest healing and profound transformation was when i experienced my masculine energy as the most loving generous kind supportive energy within me that just wants to make my dreams happen it wants to make my vision happen my dreams and visions so i was to come to discover was coming from my feminine energy that essence my spirituality my soul it's my creativity it's all that stuff that we haven't learned to value and so i came to the i came to the feminine understanding it and working with it and bringing more of that into my life because quite frankly i was pretty burned out from doing life the toxic masculine way because there's another side to it does that make sense yeah of course and, and i think you touched on something really interesting there in that the masculine energy stereotypically is, is taking action and is very visible and i think this is one of the, the, the challenges that, that we have um, in that if we're talking about the, the traditional feminine, and we're not saying women are just love and kindness and they don't have the masculine traits, but we're talking about the traditional feminine traits are love, kindness, compassion, empathy, these, these, the, the, the more of the emotional side of, of, of a human being. You can't measure that. I can't look at you and see, oh, you're, that's the amount of love you've got. You know, of course you can feel it in some capacity and I can feel your empathy and your kindness and your compassion, but I can't see it like I can see your house or your car or your, your job. Or all these very sort of stereotypical, very stereotypical things that are very measurable. Mm. And as a society, I think when we talk about value of the masculine and the feminine, we've taken what's visible and said, right, that's what I'm going after because that's how I can be judged. And you're going to judge me more by not by my love, not what I can share from what's inside of me, but you're going to judge me by my job and my salary and my house and my car. So we've gone all in on that to try and impress the people around us and feel. Um, like we're fitting in with society and we're smashing this game that society is showing us mm. but inside of us we're missing that love and the kindness and the empathy that the feminine energy that is fundamentally part of us as human beings and is so important to us as human beings and that's the game that i played you know and i think it's it's for me obviously as a man it's very easy to go following the masculine traits because that's who i'm meant to be anyway I, i'm not sure no one's told me ever that that love and kindness and compassion is important to me as a man so there's even greater reason and it's measurable. So why do I want to share with my mum that I love her? I don't, that's not really ticking any of the boxes to me that I'm seeing. Now, of course, now I know that, of course I do. There's no better feeling than, than that, you know, as a man, I'd say it sounds cheesy, but there's no better feeling than love, than, than being able to express something, to be able to connect. Connection is, is the most beautiful of drugs, in, in my opinion. I've learned that, but in my 20s as a man, my life, my goal, my, 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 my path ahead was that I need to, needed to achieve all these things. It was all about ticking those boxes and then I'll be happy. Then I'll be fulfilled. And um, it was almost to the extent as a man, and I think this is really important, we, we think it's very healthy. Well, I speak about me. Um, I almost felt it was very healthy that there was still something more to chase. You know, yeah, I'm not quite happy yet, but I will be when I get that pay rise. I will be when I get that house, that car, because that's ambition. I'm just ambitious and ambition is something that we've always been taught to be very healthy. You know, at school, you always strive for more and more, you know, you want it. It is a results driven business, this game. Mm -hmm. And so it was almost when I went in my twenties, it was almost like, oh yeah, those people who are happier with nothing, you know, they seem to be really happy. But, they're just, you know, they're losers. They're, they're missing something. You know, they're, they're not ambitious like me. That's not, they're not healthy. So it was almost, you know, I got it so wrong. Now the way I see it, you know, I almost have the, the most respect I can have for anyone is someone who can be happy with so little, just with what they feel inside of them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. 
of course. Yeah, I was in I was in Lombok a couple of years ago, right in the middle of when they're having all the earthquakes, and I've never seen happier people. Destruction all around, and hearts just that were just pure compassion, simplicity, love. All that was important that they had their family with them, and that they were being kind to each other and taking care of each other. And that was that's. And they were getting shit done too, by the way. You know, they're rebuilding their homes that have just collapsed in an earthquake. So, you know, there was the masculine and feminine was going on right there. But yeah, they were beautiful. Yeah. And you, and you said it there. And I think this, this is the key part to this whole conversation. The, the, there is a healthy balance. In, in, but it's a healthy balance for men in embracing their feminine and embracing love and embracing kindness. Um, I, I mean, on that, I, I've, I've done a, a, have several conversations with a scientist called David Hamilton, um, an amazing man. And he's written 10 books around all of this stuff. And um, he talks about how as human beings, we're inherently wired to be kind. It's, it's in our nature. So, you know, we get to the, the, through this conversation that actually as human beings, if we're not being kind and we're not aligned with our truth, and if we're not aligned with our truth, we're never quite, you know, truly authentic. We're never quite truly going to be really proud of who we are. Mm -hmm. So it is to that to that degree. If someone's not, I mean, look, of course we we live in a world where we can't. We have to have barriers. We have to have healthy boundaries, and we have to. We can't be kind all the time in every capacity. Sometimes we have to put our foot down and say, "This is in this situation, I, I have to be." You know, you've got to be cruel to be kind at times. But what I'm saying is that we miss, particularly us men, we see kindness perhaps as weakness. If, if we're kind, people will, will, will use us. We have to be very firm that that's not us. And actually all that's doing is stopping us living aligned with our truth. Yeah, but the, the masculine's not, not kind. Like, it's like the feminine isn't kind. It's the empowered masculine is kind. So kind so of service to the feminine and the feminine is super kind and generous in her receiving of inspiration and connection with the truth of who she is like they're both kind for sure yeah i guess what what um where i'm going with that is, is if we're gonna you know it's not a nice term and i think we generally try and not use it because it would put off people but toxic masculinity um and not we're not saying that that kindness is, a, is purely a feminine trait but where men can become toxic if we want to use that term is if we think that that kindness is weakness right. and we and we start to, to think i've got to be i've got to be absolutely all man here i've got to be strong and tough and if i'm kind people stop thinking that i'm strong and tough so therefore part that i'm going all in on the tough guy mm -hmm. and then we start to lose our kindness yeah and yeah. that's unhealthy yes yes yeah yeah Shall I have we've gone go? off we've gone off pitch haven't we quite slightly but i was just wondering i got a little bit distracted by the chat i did see there was a chat but i don't actually know how to um hold on there we go let me open it uh Willem says we associate our self-worth and fulfillment with external topics right exactly when that doesn't satisfy us we need to look internally yeah, except that nobody, well, for many of us, no one showed us how to find our self-worth and fulfillment internally. And so this healthy dynamic between masculine and feminine energy is inviting us into that. How can we find our self-worth and fulfillment within our masculine and within our feminine with, and, and with, through the, the dance of both? Uh, Carla Grivaro, hello, says, my two-year-old who's very kind and sweet. Yes. <laughs> I think that's such a, 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 an important point. You know, yeah. as kids, you know, at two years old, we are. It's inherent. As, as human beings, we are. And I think the problems start to come in for men when society starts to take us down the wrong path. Mm. And it starts to show to us, right, if you're going to be a man who's going to thrive, these are the qualities you need. And we stop being kind and sweet, which actually is at our, is at our core. You mm. know, call it the feminine energy, if you like. But that's that balance and it's not saying right well if you're going to be kind and sweet you can't also be strong and tough as well mm -hmm. and embrace that masculine as well you can you know i always i love the example i think this this tends to be quite relatable to people but i love the example of the film 300 
Um, have you seen, have you seen 300? Okay, I, I love this example because 300 is about 300 warriors uh, in, in Greece and it's, it's based on a true story somehow. The film is not true, but, and um, there's a, the leader of, of the 300 men is, is this guy called Leonardis. Now he is the absolute warrior. You know, he is the alpha in any capacity. And he leads his men and these 300 men or 299 men would follow him to war and whatever his actions, they are with him. And what he says, he goes, he's the ultimate leader. And at war, he plays that role incredibly. He comes back to his wife, his queen, and he softens and surrenders. And he is, she is his queen, she is his power. And he, he, you can see it in him, you know, him melting to her love. Mm. And he, for me, is this example, I mean, this is based years ago, but of a man who can embrace all parts of what he is, not just that warrior leader, and he has to stay in that role all the time, here is a man who can play that role and then when love is needed he can soften into that space too and now we're talking about the full spectrum of what's possible as a man yes i love that i love that then while you were talking then i was just kind of wondering what what did it take for you because you were really you were like so far down but like on the masculine side like to be a man to be of value I've got to be strong and successful and make the money and, and kindness is just a complete waste of my time. So you were like, right, like that side of the conversation. So what did it take for you to, to bring yourself into some level of balance, which by the way, I'm not denying is probably a daily practice. Yeah, it, it definitely, I think now it's more of a, a, a common habit than a, I don't have to practice. It's, it's now I've learned who I am. It's, it's just acting out my truth, which is beautiful. But it took, for me, it took a, a problem around sex. You know, I, I always struggled to orgasm is my story. Yeah. Um, and um, in that space, you know, it was in my 20s, that was almost part of my act. You know, it was kind of a lot of men would sort of go, oh, I, wish I, I wish I had that problem. You know, I'm the opposite. And it was kind of, you know, they called it the gifts, you know, <laughs> and we, we had a laugh at uni and it was kind of fun. But age 30, it got to the point for me where I was like, do you know what? Like, this isn't serving me in my relationships. And one day I want to have kids and uh, I don't want this anymore. If it wasn't for that challenge around sex, then I'll be honest, like society was patting me on, the, on my back saying everything's great. I remember my flatmates saying, Ben, you're living the dream. This is all you know, there's girls and there's parties and it's, you know, the money was coming and it was all that stuff that tick, 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 tick. If it wasn't for the challenge around sex that made me stop and go, I want to change something here. The easy route for me was to continue doing what I was doing. And that's why I know this is such a, such a challenge. Um, because the easy path for men is to keep plowing on. And, uh, when I worked with a coach, she, I, I, I thought she was going to turn me into some kind of sex god. She was going to teach me all new tricks and I was going to, you know, this is great. Um, she, I didn't know she was going to rewire my brain and talk to me about vulnerability and emotions and all this other stuff that was just mm -hmm. returning me back to what I needed. If I did, I might not have gone there because I was like, I don't want to, like, I'm just not emotional. That's not me. What, like, I, that was how I'd been for 30 years I didn't or 25 perhaps the first five I was different but um I didn't want to return I didn't want yeah. to go so but you'd learned then if you'd learned to do life from the masculine only and then you could argue slightly toxic masculine you were doing life from your head Right, so you'd learn to do life through this, this function, which is like, I've got to figure it out. I'm going to process it. I'm going to wrap my brain around it. And you know, I'm, I'm going to get logistical. And when it comes to sex and really connecting with another human being and being vulnerable enough to experience the fullness of, of pleasure, that depth of intimacy requires you to be present in your body, right? Which is the home of the feminine. So the home of the masculine is the brain, the home of the feminine is the body. And the feminine, she feels the masculine. So talking about the energies, not gender here, the masculine energy thinks, figures stuff out. The feminine feels, she intuits, and she's present in her body. And so you're healing, you are through your body. Because I think we've, we all, life gives us all a big challenge, a big slap on the face to invite us to up level something. And then, you know, if we really subscribe to living like that, up level lots of things again and again and again, right? So what was given you was your 
body and your sexual relationships. For me, it started with relationships and then it moved into my business and my health and, and other things, different challenges that had me have to work with my masculine and feminine energy. But so you were, you were being invited into your body, into being vulnerable and into feeling your way through life, not just thinking. That's, it, that's, like, that's mega. Yeah, I mean, my, my, I guess one of my sort of mantras now is to feel more and think less. Um, and um, yeah, I often say that to myself and it's scary you know the rational the rational mind wants control it wants certainty it wants everything to be thought out and planned and strategic and all that stuff but you can't think love you know you can't you can't think connection these aren't rational things these are these are human emotions that come from depth and vulnerability and um the feminine everything that we've talked about and that, that, you know the way you put it was beautiful and exactly right i was i was learning to stop thinking you know I, when i was having sex i was probably thinking how to try and do it well yeah. i wasn't feeling the experience like thinking like what's the strategy here <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so honestly you laugh but it's like uh yeah probably you know yeah. and um and i think that coupled with the fact that um my mum's a nurse she is a very kind compassionate and emotional sensitive woman and it's beautiful and i love all those things in her but i was taught never to be those things and i was taught to very much bury my emotions so i probably had i probably was a sensitive boy naturally and i was having to bury them and i just stopped feeling and you'll you know we all know that the thing with feelings is you can't choose just the good ones you know if you want to feel which i'd say to anyone is a healthy place to live then you're going to get the full spectrum and you're going to have some good days and you have some bad days but at least you feel alive you know i was numb you know, and then you, you talk about sex and inability to orgasm well if you're numb it kind of makes sense right yeah totally but you know we haven't so this is a thing it's like it's a trust piece as well isn't it because if we've grown up learning we kind of grew up learning our minds and to trust our thought and to trust that our brain will figure everything out for us um, and, and to trust that our value is reflected to us through external pieces. So we, that's kind of lot what we've learned to trust. We haven't learned to trust our feelings and our emotions, our intuition, all these beautiful feminine traits. No one taught us to trust that and be okay with that and to trust that when I feel like I'm enough, when I feel I'm valuable, that that's true. I can't prove it. I just know it. I feel it. We never learned to trust that. But right there is our power. Right there is like, like when we tap into that, anything's possible. Like it's not about figuring it out. We're like, we're co-creating with something else. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I think that the, the traditional masculine traits lead us to a very safe life, but not necessarily inspired one. Um, and that's where I was living. You know, it was safe and it was ticking boxes, but I didn't feel alive. Whereas, you know, feeling your emotions and getting lost in love and all these things, they're, they're scary. Someone can break your heart. You know, they're not necessarily safe. There's, there's no, you can't process it. You can't work it out. It's not rational. But you feel alive when it's the most beautiful thing. It's the human, this is the human experience. Um, for me, the human experience isn't ticking the boxes. It's not, it's not going through doing everything that you should do they're none of the things that you're going to judge yourself by when you come come to the end of your life you're going to judge yourself by what you felt what you experienced and yeah this the, the, the part of my passion and part of why i love having these conversations is because i want us to readdress this balance and i want every human particularly men to start to learn that a big part of our internal happiness is going to come when we start to really feel and learn to feel and become vulnerable enough as a man to be judged for expressing our feelings and connecting deeply and expressing our love and sharing our kindness and all of those things, not to take away the traditional strength and courage or whatever it is that defines you as a man, not to take it away, but to add that to your repertoire, to be able to be more of what you're capable of. Yeah, and, and I would echo exactly what you said for women. 
because most of the women that I've ever worked with and in my own personal experience, um, us, us high achievers, we've only learned how to do life through like, like working really freaking hard, kind of pushing our way through and getting to the top, you know, and the, oh my God, the perfectionism and the constant thinking and the figuring it out and the, it's so exhausting. And the, the kind of added confusion is, but I'm in a woman's body. <laughs> and, then, and, and then as a woman, we've got that kind of piece around, you know, historically, I mean, I know it's still going on, we've achieved a lot of equality, but, you know, we've spent decades as a gender trying to get equality with men. And we've gone about that largely the wrong way. We've gone about that like, okay, I want equality with a man, so I'm going to become like a man. The, those more toxic kind of um, disempowered masculine traits that you were talking about, we've started being like that historically. Mm. And, and the, the tide's turning now and we're learning, thank Christ, we're learning a different way. But we, I would have your message for men, I would have exactly the same message for women. It's to, to move through life and feel balanced to feel peaceful to feel oh my god don't we just all want to be happy to feel calm to feel on purpose that i mean with all that's going on right now there's so many conversations i'm having with people about i don't feel on purpose anymore like um you know it's to to have that experience of life we all, men and women, need to find our flow and our dance between our, our empowered masculine and feminine energy. Um, it's it's for all of us, and yeah. No, I, I I totally hear you, and then I think the important part to all of this is that I don't have any blame for for, for anyone in this space because none of you know these conversations don't happen. They certainly we didn't get near it at school. You know, we weren't taught any of this stuff. So how are any of us meant to know? How is any man meant to know how to feel? I, I didn't know how to feel. I just said, so how do you feel? I, I was fine. I didn't know what, like, none of this is, we've no just language. shown what we've shown. Yeah, there's no language around it, right? I work with lots of women now and you say, how do you feel? And they're like, good. Yeah, and if good, what, what's, and the feeling is good. I know, okay. Uh, you know, we haven't even learned a, like a, a vocabulary for our feelings. No, totally. There's so much we haven't learned. So, I, you know, I stumbled across this stuff by accident. So I think when I'm, when I'm talking about this from a male perspective, there's no criticism. I don't have, I don't have you know, I've got two older brothers who are in a very different space than me. I don't have any blame for, for, for the way that any of them behaving. Um, it, no one's ever taught us otherwise and as I say I stumbled across this I always a big thing that I would say for, from a male perspective is that I really believe that every man has this within them they have the, they have the, they have a heart inside of them that wants to feel that wants to connect that wants to embrace this feminine energy not be 100% feminine we're not saying that just bringing in the feminine I always use this example of, of, of someone who's become a good friend of mine, actually, um, a guy called Michael Maisie, who's, who's written an amazing book. Now, Michael's story is that at 15, he was arrested for armed robbery. And uh, he was in and out of prison for, for a number of years for, for all sorts of things that were bad, you know, and I can't condone what he did. When you look back at his um, childhood, and you learn that he was born to an alcoholic mother and a heroin addict father, and at, at four, he was sexually abused by his uncle you start to realize that from his perspective, he was in danger and life was challenging, age five. You know, this was a hard, hard world. And his mind kicks in and tells him, Michael, if you're gonna stay safe, you need to go and be a man who can protect himself, who can look after himself, who's gonna be at the top of the tree, not sitting here getting all this stuff done to him. And I'm not condoning what, I, what he did, as I say, at 15, but you start to understand how his mind took him and led him to this place. Now, when I, I, the work he does now is going into prisons and he's won, work, he's won prizes from the Met Police for the work he's done in rehabilitating prisoners. He's got an incredibly soft, kind heart, very sensitive, very touching. You know, we check in deeply with our emotions and it's like, well, you know, this is something if we met each other 15 years ago, we would have, it would have been an entirely different conversation. But 
my point being is that his heart has always been pure. It's always been full of love and kindness and compassion. But we get shown things happen in our lives, different experiences happen that take us in a different direction. Do I blame Michael at 15 for what he did? I can't say I do. I'm not condoning it. I understand it. It wasn't right. But this is what happens in life. And all these men who perhaps, um, you know, not to make them wrong, but can't, aren't feeling or aren't most emotional or aren't open with their hearts. It's not their fault. I, I, I love the quote, your wound is not your fault, but your healing is your responsibility. You know, so I would invite people that, yeah, I'm not saying you've done wrong. I'm not saying you're bad. I'm not saying that you've got it wrong. But what I am doing is inviting men to just, just to look into this. To wonder, you know, if there is that that missing point in your life, there's something within you that, that isn't quite perhaps quite what you want. There's something not quite there. Perhaps it's not that money, that car, that job promotion. Perhaps it's it's something internal. Perhaps it's an expression of love, a connection. You have to go to depth with your partner. Those kind of things, and that's an inward journey. And um, I welcome everyone to go on it. That's that's really my message from a man's perspective no i hear you absolutely and from the women that i work with and particularly like the single women that i work with the single women are all looking for guys that are emotionally available spiritually connected <laughs> able to have open-hearted conversations they're vulnerable like these women are looking, they also want him to be strong and a provider and they want him to have kind of have his shit together, right? But they don't want him to just be this, like, when I'm getting a, a vision of Mel Gibson right now in um, Braveheart, they don't <laughs> just want that. They, they want some of that, of course they do. We, we love a bit of that. And that's the beautiful, that's when it comes down to the gender, we, the opposite. The opposites are, are important. So yeah, we want that, but we want you to have a beautiful, soft heart. We want you to be able to talk to us. We want you to be able to tell us how you feel because that's where we connect and that's where we get that the vulnerably, vul vulnerability and intimacy comes in. Yeah. At the same time, you don't want them to be an emotional, like bomb all the time of everything is complete. Oh, how are you feeling? But how does that make you feel? You know, it's constant. It's like, no, go show me you're a man as well at times. You know, it's, it's, it's that full spectrum, right? Right, which is the self-responsibility piece. It's like, do your work. Like what we don't own owns us. So you, yes. like, do your work. Um, ben, we've got loads of questions now. Should we have a quick look? And oh, see nice. So we yeah. can get really kind of juicy in the conversation as to what people want to hear. Um, I'll go right to the top. So Philippa has said, uh, what can energy healing look like at home? I was I naturally lead a masculine energy life cycle. I was about to work on my feminine energy as I naturally lead. Well, I'm actually hoping, Philippa, that since you posted that and we've had quite a bit of conversation, we've opened up a little more information as to what masculine feminine is. Um, ben, do you have anything to say on that one? Um, I used to work on my feminine energy as I naturally need a masculine energy life cycle. Actually, do you know what I would say is like, I, I feel like there's, there's with any transformation and growth, there's going to be layers and levels and progression to it. And just speaking from my perspective, when I was at the very beginning of learning to understand and connect with my feminine, the calling for me was to just, was actually to learn to stop and surrender more. So to notice my busyness, I was always being busy, notice how that was how I was proving my worth, how I was getting my sense of significance and safety and security and connection outside of myself and just stop. And that, I mean, it might sound simple, hardest thing I've ever had to do, still is, still is one of my biggest challenges to just lay down tools, ignore the to-do list, check yeah. out how I feel. Ask myself every morning, how do I feel? What do I need? And just honor that. Like that for me as a step one is a game changer. It, it, it's not easy. 
Um, but in terms of what can you do at home? Look, we're in this time of, um, I call it cocooning. I can't stand, I can't use the word lockdown. Um, where we have no choice right now except to go within. It's the perfect, this is the perfect opportunity to begin this journey home to finding more of a balance. Um, ben, what do you reckon? No, I, I was going to say, just at a simple level, I guess maybe my work with men, it's almost starting one stage before that, is just learning to feel. And um, the way you learn to feel is by connecting with your feelings. And that sounds crazy, but just asking yourself, how do I feel? You know, asking every day, let's try and name three emotions that I felt today. And it's like a muscle. The more you become connected to your feelings, the more you can feel them, the, more, the, the stronger they can get. So, um, so yeah, I, I invite some of my clients just to, if they've got a partner at the end of each day, try and share three emotions that they felt that day. Um, just to get themselves practicing, just, just learning how to feel. That's so good. That's so good. It, it's basic, but that's hard as well in the beginning. It is. Yeah. I didn't know. I, I, you know, I, I didn't know how to feel. How did I, in my twenties, I didn't know what I felt. Of course, sometimes you had extreme emotions, but the majority of the time I was fine. And that was that. <laughs> yeah. I, it's funny because quite often I ask my son, how are you? And he's about to, he'll turn 13 in a couple of days. Like fine. And, and, and how else are you? Okay. And the next question from Carla is how to protect boys from becoming toxic. So uh, Ben. Yeah. I mean, I, this is probably the question I get asked most and it's, there's no simple black and white two plus two and do four and you sorted here. It's, um, you, I think uh, from a female perspective, if this is often from, from Carla, I think it's continuing to show them the beauty of the feminine energy and to allow space for that with them. So, you know, not to, to, to tease them or not saying anyone would, but to, to deny them of that, that ability to feel, to express their emotions, to ask them, to invite them, to give space, um, to just really allow them to, to do that. It's, it's hard because society does t try and take them away every day they're at school, I imagine. I don't know what kind of school they're at, but it's, you can easily imagine the majority of the kids would, would tease them if they said, you know, something emotional or kind, perhaps even. So um, I think all we can do is hope for shifts in society and as a, as a parent, really allow space and invite them to embrace that energy when they're with you mm. as much as possible. You, know, you can only control what you can control. It's hard. I wish I had a better answer for it. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, as parents, we're always wondering what to do, aren't we? And we're doing our best and hopefully we're as conscious as possible. I know with my son um, and now my stepson, um, it's just for me it feels really really important to just hold safe space for him to feel whatever he feels and it's okay that just that feels so important to never ever like ever say man up don't cry that's what girls do i mean that kind of conditioning which i experienced when i was a little girl and witnessed in friends you know that's that was in the 70s that was the message like man up don't be so difficult I mean, for me, actually, even being a girl, having emotions, being a teenage girl with a disempowered masculine <laughs> father, like, if I had emotion, there was no space for that. Like, no space, no time, no compassion, no understanding. It was just like, you're difficult, quit it. Don't, don't. Emotion, don't. So, of course, you go more and more into your head and trying to figure things out rather than processing and moving it through your body. Um, Nick, hello Nick, uh, says if we go back in history there were very defined roles for both sexes, yeah. Those roles have changed especially over the past century, yeah. It's even a little confusing as to what role everyone is supposed to play these days. What would you say to that Ben, that last piece? Um, what role we're supposed to play? What role are we supposed to play? I mean, it is difficult. It depends if we're asking ourselves what, what role are we supposed to play according to ourselves or according to society? Because, um, you know, they might be two different things. Um, and it is confusing. It is confusing. Um, you know, men at the moment are being told we can't be, um, yeah, well, we're told we can't be all sorts of things and I want to go into the details of it. But we don't quite know, you know, Piers Morgan always gets so confused, you know, but, but, but well, I'm a man, I need to be this. And it's, you know, all these different things. And um, I, I fundamentally, from my perspective, 
it's a bit of a broken record now at the end of this conversation, but it's being able to step into both your masculine and feminine. It's being able to still be kind and strong. It's still be able to, to, to be tough, but still soft. You know, being able to embrace both parts of you, but not, if you're all in on the tough, and all in on the, on the strong, then you can miss other people's emotions. You can lack empathy when other people are down. It's, you can enforce yourself on people unnecessarily. You're not taking other people into account and that's, that's unhealthy. Um, but I get it because as, particularly as a guy, you know, some, you know, we talked about it earlier, but yeah, women are saying they want, you know, emotional guys. And then a guy suddenly shows his emotions and a girl goes, Oh, get away. I don't want a softy, you know? And it's, well, God I thought girls want emotional, you know, it's, it's about finding that balance and about finding your roles at the right time and being able to tap into your into your powers yeah. as and when it fits yeah absolutely and as you and i both packing it up and stepping into your authentic self just and that that is the balance florence hello darling says it's interesting that both men and women alike have a high level of masculine energy to an extent that it's become toxic what is it about the environment that we humans have created that creates this unbalance within us all? Yeah, well, the patriarchal piece, isn't it? I mean, we've just learned to do life in competition. We've, we've learned to embrace scarcity as, as a law of nature rather than abundance, that there's more than enough for everybody. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're sort of elbowing each other out of the way because apparently there's not enough for all which is not true, right? Ben, what do you think? No, I completely agree with you. And, and I think it goes back to this, this whole measurable thing as well. You know, that masculine measurable energy, that, that doing stuff, people can see it. They can see your results, but they can't see your emotion. They can't see your love. It's not measurable. You can be the kindest person in the world, but no one can judge you on that or not easily. You know, they can only feel it in person. So we tend to go after the, the, the measurable stuff, which tends to fit in tune with the masculine energy. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, I'm not saying it's right, but it's, I think it's, it's why we've gone down that path. Yeah. Yeah. Neelam says the best leaders, especially male, embody these traits of kindness, empathy, and vulnerability. Yeah. I would completely agree with that. Ben? Yeah. I think there's nothing more, more, well, from my perspective, I'm so drawn to those masculine men, but who then show me kindness and vulnerability. And, you know, that, that, that for me is, that's a, that's a true man. That's a complete man. Well, there's, no, sure. there's nothing more courageous, brave, strong than vulnerability, right? Mm. Being vulnerable, that's like heart exposed. Totally. Yeah. But it's beautiful. That's where connection lives, right? Totally where connection lives, but we, you know, yeah, well, yeah, oh, I was about to go off on a whole dialogue there, but I won't <laughs> <change> the subject. <laughs> uh, next question, hold on. Dana, hello, Dana. Uh, can you do all masculine, sorry, can you do all masculine or all feminine in a way that's not toxic? It's a good question, isn't it? um all masculine or all feminine i i don't think you can i think we have to have both right am i misunderstanding the question no i, I think well, no i think you're right it's um i don't know there might be ways of consciously you know just being i think maybe perhaps you probably can go all in and you can be missing your feminine but still not be not be toxic I think you can still be. Oh, I see. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, but yeah, it's probably fairly unusual. If you've got the, if you're lacking the feminine, you probably are missing the capabilities of, of, you know, empathy and, and basic human emotions that mean perhaps your courage and your bravery does go inappropriately and becomes toxic. If that makes sense. Yeah, I, um, Dana, I love you and I know you. I love you so much. And I don't really understand the question because for me, it's like, it's just always the dance. I, I think the feminine informs the masculine. The feminine inspires the masculine. The feminine, she feels what she feels. She intuits. She, un she, she feels into what she needs. She feels into how she can be of service in the world. 
she feels into her her purpose and and she inspires the masculine to take action so that she can show up in the world authentically as who she is and the masculine then makes that happen and he does it from a place of just absolute love and devotion and pure service like yeah let's make that happen let's be that in the world and and so i don't i don't know how you can move through life being authentically fully who you are if the your feminine energy isn't inspiring your masculine into action that's 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 how i see it i i don't see a way of but that i, I might not be fully understanding the question uh, Karen says, my authentic self is very much weighted towards the feminine energy. If this feels more authentically me, should I still aim for more balance? What are your thoughts? So I know, I know Karen well, she's a superstar and she's got beautiful feminine energy. Um, I, I would say that to really, to really be stepping into your true power, that, that you might be embracing more of your masculine energy than, than you know. Um, but, you know, things like healthy boundaries, you know, there, if you are too kind, people can take advantage. And then that leads to disease inside of you. You know, if you can feel that you're just trying to be nice to someone and that that's what you're getting back and you, you don't say anything, you feel walked over, you feel like you've been trampled on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, part of the masculine will be to set this healthy boundary, being kind, but also letting someone know that actually that hurt me. You know, you, 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 you took advantage of me there. So that's where the, the healthy masculine can come in. But so you might already be doing that without realizing, you know, because you still do it in a kind and compassionate way. And I, th I think that is a, a superpower, if I'm being honest. I always say to clients, if you can express your anger kindly and compassionately and through conversation, then you, you're in a pretty strong space because you can start having conversations rather than toxic arguments but still express what's within. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm aware of the time, so I'm gonna rush through. Uh, uh, Carla says, alpha chimpanzees are in charge because they look after and protect the head females. Amen. Uh, Alison, leader, provider, competitor, winner, stereotyping has often meant that men will come from a solution-based, non-emotional and positional perspective. Yeah. How can women in the workplace use their masculine energy too with this without meeting it in what is seen as negative? What's well, interesting, I actually think kind of what Ben just said, around being able to communicate, when we can really communicate from an empowered place, which means we've cleaned up our stuff, and we're just speaking our truth from our heart with love, it's quite hard and with, from a vulnerability as well. If we speak with truth, love and vulnerability, it's quite hard for that to be received as negative. In my experience, like it's kind of, it's not, um, it, it's incredibly powerful and boundaries can be incredibly strong and you can very clearly express what you need and what's okay for you and what's not okay for you. Um, there's nothing wishy-washy there. It's not aggressive because it's coming from love. It's my experience. It's knowing your value, isn't it? It's, yeah. I, t I totally agree with you. We can do it. It's the superpower that, again, we're never taught, superpower. but it, it's possible for us to do. You know, I, I can let you know it's not okay in a kind and loving way. Right. Which is, for me, our ego demands that we, that, it is heard if it's flared up it's like you need to hear me so it usually tells us to go to aggression and shouting because then we're hurt but if we can express ourselves without our ego flaring up then it's kindness and compassion and it's hey that wasn't okay and um i'm not okay with that happening again just so you know right right i i so much i could say on that but we'll move on um, Neelam, a lot of confusion lays in believing the two energies correspond to physical gender. Yes, and this isn't, you're absolutely right, and that's kind of what we really wanted to get across today. This is an energetic piece, right, Ben? This is the energetic within all humans, no matter how you identify. So important, yeah. We're not saying that women can't be strong and courageous and shouldn't no. be, or it's the, just the definition of the energies. Yeah, totally. Totally. Uh, Carla, can men explore this? Are there workshops, circles, retreats for men? 
There are, and actually I'm glad you asked, because I think hopefully, touch wood, and this is probably a bit of a, an exclusive, but hopefully I'm going to be joining uh, one called Men Without Masks, which I went on myself, and it was amazing, amazing experience. It's run by an ex-rugby coach, so he's very aware of the masculine energy. And um, so hopefully, in, I think the next one is in July, hopefully I'm going to be joining then, all things, all things going well. So that's Men Without Masks, and they're on Instagram. Yeah. Or, or there's a website. Yeah, it's an amazing experience. I did it three years ago, I think. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll tell my husband. Oh, nice. I'm not saying that because he needs to go. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And I reckon he would love that. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, um, well, before I ask the questions, let me just check with Courtney. I can't see you anymore. Oh, there you are. How are we for time, Courtney? Am I allowed to keep going for a little bit? Yeah, we can do like five, ten more minutes more. Okay. Um, I've lost my place. Alison, instead of lockdown, the Singapore PM uses the phrase circuit breaker, much more powerful. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's cool. <laughs> uh, Flo says, can you both tell me an example of an empowered man and an empowered woman if you can? Hmm. I think I've got one, but it might be controversial if you want me to go. Go on. <laughs> Well, I think probably the, the, the um, an, an easy example probably would be um, President Obama, but he's not one I, I want to go into because I don't know him that well. I, I'm not, I don't follow politics usually well, but what I would say controversially is perhaps Anthony Joshua, the boxer. Um, mm -hmm. He, for me, despite obviously huge masculine traits and the courage and bravery that he shows through what he does, but also, um, he is very, I, I feel he's very um, empowering with his energy to other people. He wants to listen. He wants to hear. He's, he's courteous. He's kind. Uh, he's compassionate. You can feel him. He's authentic. He's not trying to be the dominant. He's very inwardly confident. He's like, hey, this is me. And I'm keen to hear about you as well. Mm -hmm. And... So I, 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 perhaps he's not the most obvious, best example in the world of, 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 of a man in his feminine energy, but considering how masculine in theory he is, he is someone that, for me, I love to see the, some of the feminine in him. And it not holding him back, it not making him any weaker, but just making him more of a complete man. Yeah, totally. I, I would love to actually, for everyone listening, to just quickly write if they have any, because I would, when I get to the bottom, I would love to be inspired by who you all think is an empowered masculine and an empowered feminine in the world. Uh, empowered, sorry, empowered woman and an empowered man in the world. I would be really keen to see that. For me, who brings to mind um, empowered women-wise? I can't, sorry, it's going to sound really cheesy, but I immediately go to Oprah. I just feel like she's got such heart. She's so vulnerable. She's so inspired and creative. And I don't think she'd take too much shit. You know, like I think she has the ability to speak her truth. And have, I am, would imagine she has incredibly strong boundaries, but she, can, she speaks from a place of love and compassion. Uh, I also get the same feeling from uh, Marion Williamson, who's running for president right now. Um, uh, and she's a major spiritual teacher. If you've not heard of her, she's amazing. Um, uh, I love these answers, by the way. It's really interesting. Are they are there any coming? Oh, Liz Gilbert, Brené Brown. Nice, yeah. Beyonce, <laughs> yes, yes. Jacinda Ardern, yeah. Prince William, Prince William. Inter yeah. Mm, good, and that's great because to have a figurehead like him coming through. And, and, and as an empowered man, beautiful. Since I turned, yeah, Meghan Markle, yeah. Yeah. Okay, quick last question, I think, uh, Alison. What I'm finding interesting in this time is that my friends with husbands and kids who are now working at home is that they believe their work is more important than their partner's contribution and the women are still doing more. And sadly, we're seeing an increase in domestic violence. How can this new normal potentially changing the dynamics for better goodness me it's funny my husband said to me he said gosh now i understand how much you do now that he's around the house more it's like, you run a business and all of that i'm like yeah 
Amazing, isn't it? Um, I think I need so, to that question again. Yeah, me too. But I would say that I do think this is a healthy, you know, you, the amount of, of men saying that teachers deserve a pay rise and all this kind of stuff now. And, you know, there's this recognition. I mean, as I say that, it's like, what about rather than teachers, how about, you know, recognising their wives and partners? But um, there's definitely men are being exposed to the truth of what goes on. And I'm, I'm coming from a place of being in, in WhatsApp groups with bunches of men with, with kids and hearing what they've got to say about it. So um, there's definitely a recognition, I think, of actually going to work could perhaps, without dropping men in it, could actually be an easier job <laughs> than, uh, than staying at home with the kids. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it, and it is, it goes back to what do we value? Yeah, so that maternal piece, is that valued? Or is it more valued the one that goes out and brings in the cash? It's, yeah. Again, you can measure the cash, can't you? But you can't measure the, the love that the mother has given to the children that day behind closed doors. Exactly. How, how, how does the husband see that? I mean, he can feel it probably if he's observant, yeah. but it's not visibly measurable. Yeah. So when, when we're going into this space of um, choosing to find a healthy balance between our masculine and feminine, we're being invited to redefine everything that we value, right? And then the number of mums I talk to in my work who would say to me outright, and this is the belief, but I don't contribute. How, how can I go on that retreat and pay for that? I don't have any money. I don't contribute to my household. How do you not contribute? And then it becomes a question of, well, what do we value? Yeah. Mm. Uh, Hopefully there's a rebalance going on with that in this period. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, there is a sad increase in domestic violence, Alison, and we won't talk about it just now, but yeah, it's horribly, horribly sad. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's about polarity. We need both energies to be optimum and in flow. Yes. Yes, yes. I feel like we've hit the end of the questions and comments. Uh, ben, to wrap up, is there anything else that you felt like you wanted to say that we haven't quite addressed? Just that we've done exceptionally well on the timing. <laughs> That's, we've managed to, that could have been anything, but we've, we've got it to about the right place, haven't we, I think, five past. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know I love this conversation. I'm grateful for everyone for showing up and listening and all the questions and and i just i'm grateful that this message is 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 happening and um so thank you all bright for making it happen thank you katie for for having me and thank you everyone for listening you're welcome yeah thanks all bright for having us i'm so glad that even though we didn't get to do this live at rathbone tonight we got to do it here instead and i'm so excited for our daring and mighty dinners live to begin again whenever me, that is. me too <laughs> Me too. Thank you both so much. That was fantastic. Like such a such a good Thursday evening. Yeah. Um, and I've learnt so much too, and I'm sure everyone else has. So thank you. And we will be back in the club soon. Yes. Um, Courtney, is there going to be a recording of this we can share with people? Yeah, it's recording. So I will share it on Connect. Probably cool. it's Friday tomorrow. So I just do a roundup at the end of the week and do all the recordings. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for joining thank us. Thank you. Bye, Thanks everyone. Enjoy your evening. Bye-bye.